Today, I'm going to demonstrate how we can use fairly standard computer vision techniques to generate new representations of art collections that are better suited for analyzing the history of our blog illustrations. We illustrate our methods on the Bodleian Ballads collection, which share many similarities with the new British Library dataset. It consists of ballad sheets looking like this. From, uh, printed from the 16th to the 20th centuries, containing text and illustrations, as you can see in the examples. Do take note that there are repeating instances of the same illustrations, such as the pairs I'm pointing at now. So, you're looking at a typical ballad sheet in our data set, and you can see that the illustrations appear in different sizes and locations, etc. So uh, these illustrations are of interest to art historians who would usually manually <laughs> cut out the images and study them. However, computer vision techniques can generate new representations that are better suited to their research problems. So we break down our problem into four key objectives. First, we identify the woodcut illustrations on the ballad sheets, as you can see here. <coughs> Second, we cluster by semantic similarities by that, we mean similar looking images, but not necessarily printed from the same woodblock. And this helps us see the development of visual representations. Third, we cluster by exact copies, which helps the researchers identify the printer of the ballad sheet and find out more about the history of the woodblocks. And finally, we use these matches to estimate the dates on which the ballad sheets were printed. First, we identify the woodcut illustrations by eliminating the regions of text, which obviously don't contain illustrations because they have regular patterns. And having removed areas of text from the photograph, we identify the boundaries of the remaining objects automatically. And then having identified all the illustrations, we cluster the illustrations we have found by semantic similarity. For this, we have a local implementation of the standard bag of words retrieval system, as you can see now, which enables query images to be matched across the collection real time. And now you can see the balance sheets in which the illustrations appear. As you can see, similar looking images are clustered together, but there are some subtle differences in details, such as these. That shows that these two images have not been printed from the same woodblock. Having clustered the similar looking images, we determine which of the illustrations come from the same woodblock. So take a look at these two images. Can you see the difference between the two? Well, if you look carefully, you can. The eyes are slightly different. But uh, we have a collection of thousands of images, and that take a really long time. So we learn a classifier to automate the detection of the copies. First, we find correspondences between the the details in both of the images, and we have to make sure that very well aligned. The reason we do that is when a woodblock is copied, they use a tracing paper which might move around when they're being copied onto another woodblock. As a result, the cor corresponding de details might not align perfectly across the block. Therefore, we use these differences to distinguish between the illustrations from the same block and that one that's being copied. Using this classifier, we have automatically separated the instances from the same, uh, from the different woodblocks. And then we know that these images at the top have been printed from different woodblock from these at the bottom. So on our data set, these are the summary statistics we have found. 
And using this method, we have automatically <coughs> built a catalog of all the wood blocks that appear in our data set. So these are the distinct wood blocks we have found in our collection. Here we see multiple instances of the illustrations printed from the same wood block. And we can look at the pages of Bala sheets in which they appear, as you can see now. Remember that this is done all automatically with no human input whatsoever. We can also see similar looking images, which are the nearest neighbors using the Gist descriptor. The images have been warped and aligned, so the details can be easily visualized. You can see here. And finally, we study, we're able to study which wood blocks appear together frequently. And by that, we know they're likely to have come from the same printers. Just earlier this week, we just got had a first look at the British Library 1 million data set. So we had a look through our collection using our methods. We've implemented the same retrieval system on this data set. And as you can see, the same method works as you'd expect. And this is all done real time. And it finds similar looking images where there are any. Same with this example. When we had a look through the tag clusters on Flickr, we could already make some interesting observations. Here, we're looking at about 400 representations of the coat of arms of the City of London, which have already been tagged. But it, it appears that the prints come from two different wood blocks, one with the long tail, as you can see here, and some with short tails. But uh, they're mixed up in this collection. Using our algorithm, it only took a matter of seconds for us to realize that there are 267 of this type and 120 prints of the other type. And there are seven mistagged Im images in, in the collection. Similarly, uh, you, you can see many more repeated examples in the British Library collection we had a look at. And finally, this is the interesting part. Having found which of the images come from the exactly same woodblock, we took the analysis a little further. We tried to order the illustrations from the same woodblock by looking at the visual damages, such as these, and learning a classifier which can automate the ordering. For example, here, because we have a damage here, but not here, we know that the wood block has been damaged after printing this one, but before printing the one on the right. Now, we're flicking through the images from this time series. We have 28 in the collection. You can see at the bottom right corner that we're flicking through. We don't see any damages on these first 15 or so, but we see a wormhole appearing here. And then a little bit breaks off on the left, and then at the bottom, and then at the top. The vi video will play again now without the pink highlights. You can have a look at how the, the wood blocks wear and tear. And this is all done automatically as well. The wormhole we had to look at, and then part <coughs> breaking off. <laughs> so uh, we applied this method on the whole collection <coughs> that is 1,000 images, uh, ballot sheets for us. But in this presentation, uh, I'm just going to demonstrate on five sheets. The colored boxes show repeated illustrations. So the reds are the same, the greens are the same, and the blues are the same. <coughs> Now, the computer has found these damages. So between, after number four has been printed, but before number three was printed, 
this detail broke off and the same applies for the different images. Collecting all the evidence from the orders within the individual blocks, we find the general temporal ordering of all the Bala sheets. And given that we know the dates for some of these sheets, we can assign, assign dates to those which we don't know, or date ranges. And here we have the final ordering of the five sheets, which is obtained automatically. You can do this if it's five, but we do this across a collection of 1,000. So we've made three key contributions in this presentation. Firstly, we automatically cropped the illustrations and we cluster them semantically and by those from the same woodblock. We can apply the same method to any collections with their repeated illustrations, such as the British Library 1M dataset. That's it from me. Thank you. Um, we have time for one or two questions. Um, so you just said one, uh, one million or one million. One million data set. Uh, our data set we worked on was 1,000 images. But uh, we can apply the same methods to the British, uh, British Library. Huh? Previous, previous yes. So you said one, uh, one, um, one, meg, one, one million. million. Yes, the, so that's the, the British Library okay. data set that we can extend our methods to. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering how you how you real time <laughs> implement it because if you uh, but your uh, size, our our to demo. If we, uh, let me just quickly go back to when we. When we use this retrieval system, which is, we have the full million images in this collection, and it still works real time, as you can see. It takes about a second. Yeah. So, but I guess the, the call, what was it, GIST or, I mean, you had. To mm, they are pre computed. Like you had that print and like that. They are pre computed, print. yes. And so, how long would that take for the one million? Uh, Just it, curious. Uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, the, the, Getting the descriptors out took, it took us I think six hours. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. you already have the descriptors for the entire set. No, we it took us about six hours to extract the descriptors on one million images. What yeah. was the hardware? Uh, we're using, uh, um, not, Xeon. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sharing this? Huh? Are you sharing that descriptor data somewhere, or is that? Uh, not right now, be, but. You can CNN descriptors. So you can do yeah. That, so. Yeah. yeah. That would be nice. But you can yes. do it in, and you can get all the descriptors <laughs> in less than a day, just store it in a store it somewhere and then yeah. you can access it in real time. Would it be possible to make that available? Uh yes, we'll look into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.